Hi, welcome to the Light of Deception. Thank you for joining me in this series. So we are in part four where we are covering the beginning was talking about spiritual formation, soul care, and dimensions of deception. So here we go. So this is going to be part four. So part one was talking about spiritual formation. Part two was talking about contemplative prayer. Part three was talking about centering prayer. And today we're going to be talking about breath prayer. How do these all come together under spiritual formation? And what does this have to do with ancient mysticism and ecumenism? Ecumenism. We're going to be bringing it all together to tell you why it makes everybody feel like they're in this oneness. This everybody's coming up when we breathe and everybody else is breathing and the birds have a story to tell you and you're in oneness with the wind and you start sounding like a Buddhist monk. You start sounding like you have arrived at some heightened understanding of truth and everybody else needs to arrive at that heightened understanding and truth. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I fell into this deception. So I fell into all these practices, these ancient practices, the going within to find God, practicing the presence of God. I got into all these ancient practices. It even goes under Gnosticism and ancient knowledge. You know, you have some kind of knowledge that other people need to know about. And it gets into all these different places of really arriving at yourself. So... What would the Bible say? Die to self. What would the world say? Arrive at self. What would the Bible say about learning from beginning to end to understand the scriptures in its entirety? What would the Bible be saying about eschatology and the seasons and the times we're living in and this great apostasy, the great falling away from biblical truth? Some people think it's a catching away. Some people say it's a falling away. But it surely looks like the deception's been going on a long time, but it's getting worse and worse and worse. So this global system of churches is rising and the biblical believing, you know, scripture by scripture from start to finish, you know, you take the Bible as a whole, Judeo-Christians, the conservatives are now being silenced, right? So this other world system, church system that looks just like the world is rising. So if the world's into some kind of movements and agendas, the church is into it. So there's no difference between the church and the world. So sometimes I think about this. I think about why put your kid in a private school or a private Christian school if they're under the world curriculum. So start looking at that. Start looking, does the private schools teach a curriculum that's in the church? Does the private schools, you know, the public schools teach what's going on in the private schools? Is this really a private Christian school? Is this a private school that's owned under globalism? Is it a global church system? I would start questioning, are they about the Word of God? Are they standing unwavering on the Word of God? Do they look different than the rest of the world, or do they look the same as the rest of the world? Are they set apart? Are they going along to get along? So let's see. What does breath pairs have to do with all this mysticism? You'll see soon. Okay, so breath prayers, that is actually a vain repetition. So we're, the scripture is going to be right behind this. So what does the Bible say about vain repetition? Matthew 6, 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. So if you empty out in your mind, you're opening yourself up to familiar spirits, you open yourself up to things that you should not be opening yourself up to, even though it feels good. Does it feel right? It feels so 
enlightening it feels so uplifting it feels so so you know your feelings and your emotions and your imagination will lead you astray they i say that a lot because it's so 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 true what sounds good is not always good what does the bible say about such things the bible should be your roadmap for all things your plumb line for everything all things you're checking things with the word of god and not taking jesus outside the box if they're talking about the word of god right so the word of god tells you it's going to instruct you in the way you should go, right? The Holy Spirit's going to lead you in all truths. The Bible and the words are enough to, you know, to instruct you in all righteousness. So what else does a person need besides prayer and the Word of God? Praying and the Word of God and being sober-minded and vigilant in these days. And that scripture will be right behind here too. So you can see the Bible is very clear about keeping a sober mind. First Peter 5.8 be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And not getting tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, so be careful. Ephesians 4.14 That we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Because it is a warning in the Bible too that you might just give in if a new doctrine comes in. You might as well follow it. You might follow it. 2 Corinthians 11.4 For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. And those who are part of the, you know, the elect, they could fall for it too. The Bible says they could as well fall for these things as well. Matthew twenty four twenty four, For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonder to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So be very careful because they are popular, they are really worldly, they, they tr transcend across the globe. So into Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, in the Christian, New Age Christianity, everything seems to be rotating around and everybody's coming together in this global oneness. So be so, so careful that you don't get into vain repetition. Hi everyone, my name is Pastor Kate and I am an ELCA pastor in Hudsonville and campus minister for United Campus Christian Fellowship or formerly known as Wesley Fellowship at GVSU. I am so excited to share with you about mindfulness and spiritual practices from my tradition. So United Campus Christian Fellowship is an open and affirming campus ministry who focuses on social justice focuses on the gospel message of Jesus, and lives that out in our everyday discipleship. But we also know that we are part of the body of Christ in mind, body, and spirit. And so part of my education to become a pastor was learning about spiritual practices and how we can use them in our everyday lives. One of the practices that I do when I first wake up is called a breath prayer. Now, what this looks like is finding a phrase, either one or two words. So sometimes it's just happiness. Sometimes it's be kind or have courage. And I sit in the morning thinking about what I might need for that day. And I take a deep breath and I let it out. And every breath after that, I repeat that phrase. So let's take the phrase, have courage for today. So I breathe in, have courage. And I repeat that as many times as I need to. This breath prayer allows me to get ready for the day, to have a moment to myself to understand what I need that day and to pray for that. Even if you are not a praying person, this breath prayer, this breath practice can be for you because it is an intention that we need to feed our spiritual selves as well as our physical selves. So thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you find a chance to practice this spiritual practice today and that it feeds you as well.
Next, when you hear what they say next, it's coming from a seminary school that's under spiritual formation, that's teaching breath prayers, and they're just saying that you're supposed to take part of what the Bible says about prayers. Like maybe you're going to be talking about your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it in, is in heaven. Give this day our daily bread. So you're only going to take that, give this day our daily bread. You're going to cl- they say that you're going to close your eyes and you're just going to bring down your breaths and say that vain r- repetition over and over and over again. Let's practice some breath prayer as we uh, begin our conversation. So Houston, let me just turn it over to you and why don't you walk us through uh, the pra- a practice here of breath prayer? Sure, sure. I'm happy to. So there's a prayer that's always a good idea, as Randy said, and it's taken from the Lord's Prayer. And I want us to just think for a moment about one of the phrases. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And that has a lot of meaning. And I want to draw our attention to the fact that it's a, it's a communal prayer, give us. And also it talks about daily bread and all that that means and all that that makes us think of. But I want us to think about our breathing as we think about that section of the Lord's Prayer. So as you're sitting comfortably, think a little bit about your breath and think a little bit about your breathing. And in just a moment, what I want to invite you to do is to, at whatever pace you're breathing, to divide up this this prayer, give us this day our daily bread into those two sections so that in just a moment, you would align the first section of that prayer with your inhale, your as you breathe in, and then you would pray silently the second half of that prayer as you exhale. And this may seem slightly uncomfortable or maybe a little challenging, but I want us to try it. So in just a moment, I'm going to stop talking and give us maybe 30 seconds of silence to pray this prayer. You're going to pray it silently. And as you inhale, say, give us this day. And then as you exhale, our daily bread. And again, you're not mouthing the words. This is a prayer of the heart. So one more time, give us this day, our daily bread. Go ahead and practice that now. I always feel badly interrupting people when they're praying. I apologize, but uh, as you're hearing my voice, I want to invite you back. And it's my guess that there are many sensations you felt. And for some people, it was was nerve wracking to think about aligning the prayer with our breath and others it made us breathe more slowly so that perhaps we were gasping for air and others made us perhaps breathe more quickly. Uh, But I wanted to give us a a baseline of what it was like to to pray a breath prayer. And we can talk more about the mechanics of it if if we want to, or we can talk about that as you ask questions a little bit later, but uh, give us this day our daily bread is a great prayer to always, always be praying. Now it's a model prayer for us to do the whole entire thing, right? It was a model not to be that it was supposed to be repeated over and over and over and over and over the Lord's prayer. But it was a model to pray. It's a model prayer and it's not to be chanted. That's not what he put it out there for. It was showing you a model of prayer. I said that a couple of times. I think it's very important to remember that. And also these bringing down your breath and all these different things. They're Eastern meditation practices in the church. If they're Eastern meditation practices and they're in the church, what are they going to lead you to? Great delusion. You'll be given away to those delusions because you're under Eastern mysticism. So be so, so very careful. And remember, check the Word of God to make sure if anybody was teaching, whatever they're saying is biblical, because if it's not, stay clear of it. So you do not fall into deception. 
You know, I'm telling you that because I did. I was trusting people to bring in truths through their books. I was trusting people in the church because it was a Christian church. I was trusting people. You know, and that's gullible in a lot of ways. I guess I was um, very young in the faith and very gullible. So that's a, another thing, too, is if you think about it, they're putting young, young people into leadership roles. They're training them in a certain way and then leading them out as youngsters, very young in the faith. And that's how they can lead people because they can lead them into deception. And they're young enough to lead other people into deception and so on and so forth. So it doesn't mean the people that are actually doing it are doing it... Um, knowingly they're not knowingly they're somehow brainwashed they are they were taught a different doctrine and then now they're going around and they're spreading it too so you might have a main leader like a big time person that's making a lot of buck books through their models and steps and programs and all the things they have out there and then you have these other ones that are teaching it in the schools and churches and then young people are coming into leadership roles coaches i i mean i don't know what you want to call them life coaches and they're actually not mature in the faith themselves, so they're, they're very young in the faith. So if you're very young in the faith, you can be tossed to and fro by every wind of, wind of doctrine. doesn't mean that a young person can't be mature. And I'm talking about a new ear, maybe somebody that's coming into the faith, they're still in their carnality. And then there's baby Christians, and there's some that are maturing along the way. So it's a lot, most likely it's somebody that was mature in the faith will hear it and they'll say oh, that doesn't sound biblical and they'll check go back to the word of god doesn't mean that they can't fall away as well so be very very careful not to be led astray by these things that are popular in the world and everybody's saying you need to go through this program you need to go through this class you need to go through these steps you need to be a part of this movement you need to follow the person and not the lord so it's not about me it is about him and leading people to his truth because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. I hope this helps. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.